I think we're dealing with fairly fundamental principles here that sort of go, go right across the gamut of, of, of the Irish legal system. Um, we, however, do now have an administrative sanction regime with the, with the FR. Um, there are investigations in relation to Anglo-Irish um, and uh, other uh, events uh, uh, being uh, carried out. One hopes that it's carried out with proper um, uh, with a proper look at procedure. Um, I'll share one little story about how difficult this is. We had a case many years ago, the company is since gone, so I suppose I can talk about it, where basically they issued something to shareholders without any uh, approval. Um, uh, the company was an acquisitive company, they knew exactly what they were doing. They, they just issued it to shareholders because they didn't like what the stock exchange was asking them to do. Um, it took 18 months and I think 150,000 euro in legal fees on the part of the stock exchange to get um, a public censure of that company um, and the directors and that was basically all that we were able to do. Now in that case, the company you know, had, had done it previously in, in the right way. It was, to my mind, completely and utterly self-evident that there was a breach of, of rules here. But one thing that I suppose most uh, shocked me was that the company was also listed on the Irish Stock Ex on the London Stock Exchange, and therefore we did a dual process with the London Stock Exchange. They, um, uh, they had a litigator, a UK litigator, and a uh, very well-known barrister in, in the UK. And we were basically told by our barrister that had they recruited an Irish barrister, we would have lost the case. And the reason we would have lost the case is because the concept of natural justice in Ireland and therefore the, and there was a, some, some perception of a flaw in the due process you know, in that case. So, you know, that's the reality of life if you're in the regulatory business. And if you don't, uh, if you, uh, you know, and I think that it has to be looked at. I think it already has changed because we're in administrative sanctions. I don't think, for instance, that the financial regulator will be quite as constrained as we were back then. But that is the reality. And also, there's effectively a gagging order um, on any regulator um, throughout that process. And, you know, somebody sent me an email today, actually, in preparation for this, where they compared the FSA investigation of a financial institution and uh, an investigation by the FR and the level of disclosure in relation to the two investigations. And the, the FSA were enabled to put out a full three-page announcement to the market to say, this is what happened, this is the sanction, this is how they, uh, uh, why they were wrong, this is how, what we found, and this is the conclusion that we came to and they've accepted that conclusion. Um, the FR put out, um, I think it was, it was, you know, one short paragraph, which didn't, couldn't, um, and, you know, they can only deal with what they have, they couldn't explain either what the transgression was or, um, you know, what was actually found. Now, okay. I don't think that that's a good place to be. So okay. We need to do something about it. That's right. Yes, we need that's to do the something. obvious. Yeah. That it's central. What I'm suggesting is we really badly need to do something about it. Yeah. It is critical. Because look at, you know, Enron had put its people behind bars, you know, Bernard Madoff, we've seen a series of these in, the, in America, yeah. so clearly there is a certain framework of legislation in place in certain countries that has much more accountability. Colin, I know yeah. Constantine probably wants yeah, to come I, I, I just want to make a, a distinction here, though. Some of what went on in the Irish banking system looks to me as, as if it was criminal, in the sense of breaches of laws, people dressing up accounts, lending themselves, <coughs> and, and whatever. Uh, and there are two institutions principally seem to be involved in the monthly business, namely Anglo and Irish Nation, but so far as we can see. Uh, there may have been some uh, oversights, let's be gentle, in Irish Parliament as well. <coughs> uh, but it seems to have been those two mainly. They are being investigated by the Office of the Director for Corporate Enforcement. Now, uh, in the Irish system, uh, you can't just tap fellas on the shoulder, or put handcuffs on them and send them in jail. Uh, as, as a photo opportunity for the press. Uh, it may well be the case that there will be criminal prosecutions in due course, and that process in, is in train. I'm not a lawyer, I don't understand the ins and outs of it, but it's in train. Uh, 
There's a separate issue though. The other banks, so far as I'm aware, uh, were not involved in any criminal activity, but they blew the bloody banks. Now, entirely separately from uh, the failures of regulation and supervision, which were monumental, uh, there was a failure of just ordinary management in, in the banks. Uh, and okay, people have walked the plank, and that's honorable. The chairman of the two uh, banks, I have both said they were quit, and executives have quit, and stuff like that. And that's all fine and dandy. The public is entitled to an explanation of what went wrong. And I suggested in the newspaper a few weeks ago that there should be an Oireachtas committee of some description. I don't know whether it should be the public accounts committee or the finance committee or the special ad hoc committee that should do an inquiry into what happened with our banking system. We have had a system-wide banking collapse here. Most other countries haven't had anything remotely like that. They had it in Iceland, uh, all right, but no other supposedly well-organized country has had it. Uh, it's the first banking collapse we've had here in the history of the state. Uh, uh, all the financial collapses <coughs> hitherto were insurance companies mainly and very small banks. Uh, interestingly, the, one of the small banks that collapsed was called Irish Trust Bank. And some of you may remember, it might well up in the late 70s. Remember George Colley was finance minister and had to bail it out to the tune of three million quid. <laughs> uh, but which he was lacerated by the Finnegan party on the time. <laughs> uh, okay. but, but prior to it going bust, uh, Ken Whitaker, who was the governor of the central bank, tried to take their license off them. Mm. Uh, they went to court and some big down in the four gold mines gave them their bloody license back and they then went bust. Uh, and, and, and the reason that Ken Whitaker wanted to take the license off it was run by English guys. <laughs> From by Ken Bates, who, who surfaced again as the owner of Chelsea Football Club, a white boy from the East End. Uh, and the reason that Ken Whitaker wanted to take the license off them, um, they had bought a bank with a pre-existing license, they, were, they weren't consciously given the license, is because he got his hand tipped by fellows in the Bank of England, who said, uh, I really don't think that the chap should have a banking license. <laughs> and, and off they went down to the four gold mines, and, and some... Uh, Judge with the devilous and detailed and intimate knowledge of uh, gave them their license back. Okay. Um, I, I, Dan, you wanted to comment on that. Yeah, well, I, I do agree with uh, Colm on, on the question of the Oireachtas uh, Committee. Uh, I, I think. Uh, could and it should be uh, set up. Uh, but I, I wanted to make the point about the, the failure of regulation and uh, maybe it goes back to the earlier discussion. As far as I can recall, I, I was the first person in, in public life to call for the resignation of the regulator. And the opposition spokespersons didn't even do that because there is a due deference of people who have civil service positions. And it, it comes down to the, the kind of culture we have of, of, uh, uh, of not questioning. If you're in position, you stay in position. Now, we, we still have a scandal after that in relation that when, when someone has resigned, they're given an added payoff to avoid judicial proceedings and, and the like. Uh, but I, I, I think what the um, Oireachtas hearing will do is, is not only exposed to bad practices in the bank, uh, but also the, the, the failures of regulation. Uh, 